Hey. Hey. Good morning. Good morning. Afternoon. Yeah. Evening. Wherever you are. Wherever you are, <laughs> whenever it is. So happy that you could join us today. Today's topic is uh, weeds. Weeds. Yeah. Otherwise known as wildflowers. <laughs> That's right. Perhaps. And, and we think of these as important weeds. Mm -hmm. Of course, all, all weeds are important because they have a place, but... Yes. I, re I remember the first time you gave me the definition of a weed. Of course, botanically, there is no such thing as a weed. Right. Let us state that first. That's why we think they're important. <laughs> That's right. But I remember the very first time you gave me an example of a weed. Can you mm -hmm. repeat that for them? I think you said that I said, well, imagine a beautiful rose in a cornfield. Right. So typically a weed is just a flower in what we deem as the wrong place. Wrong place. And of course, no one thinks of a rose as a weed, I don't think. I don't think. But it certainly doesn't belong in a row of corn. No. And so that's, you know, just a really good, I thought it was a good image to just point out how important weeds are. There mm -hmm. are we, we, weeds get a bad name. And, I and know. Weed has this um, connotation that it is a negative plant. And to get rid of it. And there are no negative plants. Every <laughs> single plant on the planet has a place. However, that brings up the important point and distinction of is it native mm -hmm. or is it non-native? That's right. And that's a whole other topic that we'll cover. That will be a fun topic. Yeah. But native plants are very essential and Mother Earth has a very specific reason she places them where they are. So yesterday yeah. we visited Dolphin Island, mm -hmm. beautiful barrier island on the Gulf Coast, and saw monarchs mm -hmm. and gulf fritillary butterflies mm -hmm. and a sulfur and we've had a freeze mm -hmm. so first and foremost i'm thinking oh where's the food source right so we went uh, trekking mm -hmm. into the edge of the woods and mm -hmm. found that there was a bountiful mm -hmm. source of weeds or wildflowers right. and they were blooming Blooming. They had right. nectar. They had not frozen. Mm -mm. And they, they may not make it through the entire winter, but wah, wah. we were so delighted to see they had nectar. Yes. And one of the little wildflowers, I call it wildflowers, for lack of knowing its name, mm -hmm. I have a little little grouping of flowers. I say, oh, that's a wildflower. <laughs> right. But it's actually this particular white with the, the little yellow uh -huh. uh, center. Looks like a daisy, a mm -hmm. tiny daisy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what's the name? Well, the Biden's Alba, I think, is the Latin name, but it's a considered, you hear it called beggar ticks. Yeah. Which is a weird name. You know, had I been verbal at birth, <laughs> I would have had quite the discussion about the spelling of my name. Yeah. I wish I had had opportunity to talk with these scientists and botanists over the years. Well, it is, it's, <laughs> it's really amusing and entertaining when you think of... A beggar of, ticks? Right. What, what is, is a that? beggar tick? Right. Well, and they, they apparently it comes from the seed pod of the plant mm. gets real sticky. And they're like spurs, little barbs uh, yeah. that stick to the bottom of your jeans, the cup mm -hmm. of your pants, or your mm -hmm. bottom of your shoes, and mm -hmm. they hurt. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. They have other names too, but... Yes. Um, but fortunately, it had plenty of nectar and yes. food source for those butterflies. They were... They were unaware of whatever freeze mm -hmm. we might have had. And then we saw a delicate little stalk of little purple mm -hmm. uh, flowers on it. There was some lantana it's definitely growing. Definitely some lantana. This was, so wind should have encroached in this area, but there was a little knoll, and it was on the bottom side of the knoll, protected from the wind. Right, there was kind of a berm. Or like a dune that was kind of protecting, that was up above it, protecting yes. the north wind. And then it had southern exposure. So there was plenty of sunshine there. Yes. Which probably helps in diminishing any effects of a freeze. Well, personally, with my love of butterflies, I just always want to know that they've got a food source nearby. Yeah, right. So that they're not flying long uh, spaces just looking for food. That's right. And this is also why... You and I are huge advocates of keeping our personal lawns mm -hmm. designed in such a way mm -hmm. that we invite 
wild flowers into our personal That's lives. That's right. So we, and, and so the two of us have, in our own individual spaces, mm-hmm. have made a, an unconscious decision mm-hmm. to save the weeds. <laughs> For example, spiderwort. We also saw that yesterday. Yes. Spiderwort, right. another weird, funny name, right? Spiderwort. I, I didn't know Again. warts had spiders. I know. I mean, spiders have warts. Or the or, vice versa. Either <laughs> but, way. I, uh, like I said, I want to have a conversation with these botanists right. that made these names up. It's a beautiful, delicate little purple bloom. It's gorgeous. And um, so we, in a few minutes, we'll show you uh, one, one of our little areas where we have intentionally uh, relocated mm-hmm. spider ward out of one area to another area yes. where we are intentionally cultivating mm-hmm. weeds. Yes, right. <laughs> Or as I like to say, wildflowers. Wildflowers. <laughs> and the reason is, we may have touched on this, but it's a significant source of nectar for butterflies mm-hmm. and for bees. Oh, bees, yes. We just discovered that the beggar's ticks mm-hmm. are a huge uh, source of, for bees, mm-hmm. specifically in Florida. Mm-hmm. But um, but it's, it's a huge source for, the, for their honey. Yes. Well, aren't and, we lucky that the butterflies along the Panhandle and the Gulf Coast mm-hmm. don't recognize the state line? They don't recognize the state line. That's right. Aren't they we lucky? right on over. <laughs> and the plants don't either, and they just blow in with the wind. <laughs> it's funny. And we've also discovered that some, one of the plants we'll show you in a little bit is the host plant for one of our most important um, and prevalent butterflies in North America. So yeah. it's considered a weed. So <laughs> It's so funny. Humans, yeah. they, they crack me up. Well, yes. Something, you know, there we're, may we're, be we're something funny. about the fact that they are so widespread mm-hmm. that, that maybe we don't think of them as very special. Mm-hmm. We have lost the fact that just because they're growing there mm-hmm. doesn't mean that they aren't incredibly important you, just because you can't buy it at mm-hmm. a nursery right you know, or, a, or you know a plant mm-hmm. store yeah you know you that doesn't mean that they're not they could be much more important than some of the things that we go literally intentionally purchase so. yes so you know I like to consider myself an ambassador for Mother Earth mm-hmm. I love the fact that in spite of all of our attempting to eradicate and weeds and and make these perfect lawns that all of these little wildflowers just continue to pop in Mm -hmm. because if it were up to us our pollinators would not be fed year-round right when you when you say up to mankind mankind. we we, we have totally Mm -hmm. lost sight of Mm -hmm. the fact Mm -hmm. of how important they are to our survival right And, and so we just go in and obliterate the landscape that sustains them. Yes, it's it, it's like you said, there's this, this nature deficit. There's this huge disconnect mm-hmm. between how these human bodies are supported. Right. And it begins with these flowers and bees and all of the little uh, microbes that support all of that. And we just have to make room for this if mm-hmm. we want to continue to have room for us. Right, right. Yeah. So yesterday's trip to the island, other than being a picture perfect day, Mm -hmm. was so exciting to see all of the butterflies in December, Mm -hmm. thriving, Mm -hmm. loving the wind, Mm -hmm. having plenty of food source because mother nature knows how to do it. Mm -hmm. I I love the phrase uh, in harmony with nature. And I, I learned a long time ago that if we will observe nature, wow, we can learn so much about mankind. Mm. Um, nature has a lot to teach us. Oh, absolutely. We and do. I love being its student. And mm-hmm. I love that uh, it readily supplies me with so much information just by o- observation. And yesterday, we just by observation, mm-hmm. we learned of a couple of new wildflowers ourselves. There's mm-hmm. so much to know. Right. And we're thrilled to think that you know we can maybe cultivate, mm-hmm. intentionally cultivate these. Yes. Let's show them some video of where we moved some of your wildflowers okay. over to your wildflower bed. Okay. So we have a spider wart and the eccentric two of us <laughs> are going oh. to transplant this quote weed. We've pulled the monkey grass away. It just came up in the monkey grass like it wanted to 
live wildly. That's right. It's probably why it hasn't gotten mowed down because it's not in the regular lawn. Right. But this is good because this is nectar right. for some winter living insects. It's got a huge root system there. Right. And of course it's just mm -hmm. rained and so it's moist. That's good. I love that you're using a long shovel so that you can be sure to grab a good portion of the roots and disturb it as little as possible. So, yes. you'll notice the spot. Maybe you recognize this is cudweed here. I do recognize the cudweed. Turn that leaf over so the viewers can see the silvery see the silvery back. back. Mm -hmm. And of course it's not time to bloom, but when it does, it'll put up a stalk. Yep, right from the center. And I see that you've prepared a spot to yes. transplant your other weeds. Right, look at how beautiful these <laughs> healthy these roots are. They're gorgeous. So, yep. um, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking of the cudweed, mm -hmm. it is the host for the American Painted Lady Butterfly. Which I think is found in all 50 states. Yes, it is. And well, how beautiful. It looks so healthy, doesn't it? And I love that the flower's oh. still with it. Yes, <laughs> which you probably, you know, you should often think flowers don't make it in the transplanting, but. And it may not, but flowers are what help us identify more readily. Exactly. What we're looking at. Exactly. Yes. So exactly. this is a native wildflower area that will support butterflies and other pollinators during right. a time when food is not that readily found, but mother nature continues to create these little spots and yards and meadows just for this purpose. And right. you and I just find it, uh, we have a fondness for making sure that in our own private spaces, we do the same. That's right. Okay, so you see it's looking happy here. Yes, it is. And, uh, I don't know if the bloom is gonna last, but it's always good to get in the habit of watering in a new plant that doesn't matter what time of year you plant it just so the water encourages the dirt to fill in the holes <laughs> <laughs> the air hole the air pockets okay well it looks like it's going to be at home here with your little quote weed garden that's which right i call wildflowers that's right yes that's right thank you thank you and i think the pollinators would thank you too <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I want to speak mm -hmm. to this for, yes. for just a second. So a friend of mine and I were at a recently at a nursery and standing there looking at the native plants, I said to her, which of these plants do you see more bees and butterflies on? Well, it was quite obvious that the bees and butterflies preferred this beautiful plant and if you'll just stop and observe, just stop, look. Mm -hmm. When you're at the nursery or the big box stores, just mm -hmm. stop and look at the ones that they go to. You will know right away mm -hmm. that is a great nectar source. Mm -hmm. So I, I brought two of these home with me. Uh, they're very hardy. They're going to make it through the winter for me. And these hyssop? Yep. It's one of the common names for it. Mm -hmm. And it has a, you, you, you commented on the aroma. Uh, it's licorice mm -hmm. smelling. When mm -hmm. I put it in the car to bring it home, I thought, what is in my car? And I went, oh, those plants are in my car. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I smelled the licorice. And it's a hemp. perennial, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to have it. Mm -hmm. I wish I'd purchased more. Well, yeah, this is a great start, though. Yeah, yes. And I cannot tell you how many bees and butterflies were on them in the nursery as they were lined up there. But it's so much fun to go out specifically to a native nursery. Mm -hmm. We make new discoveries all the time. Oh yes, I know, right? And fortunately, the, the native nurseries, I think, are trying to keep up with the demand of, you know, curious gardeners who mm -hmm. are, you know, doing mm -hmm. the very same thing that you are doing and we're doing, which is, mm -hmm. you know, trying to create a sustainable, um, environment or land landscape for our pollinators. And one thing that we like to request of all of our viewers, would you consider keeping an area in your yard mm -hmm. native? It, it does not have to get out of hand. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to just go to the weeds. 
It, it may just be a corner that you don't mow. Correct. Because some of the plants that I've relocated were literally growing in my grass because I don't use weed killer mm -hmm. chemicals. Right. And we just try to mow to keep things at bay. Yeah. And, um, and so uh, when they get out of hand, though, you, will discover, you might discover some really valuable things. <laughs> well, and remember, too, that one of the hosts for a butterfly is actually the leaves that are left undisturbed. Yes, where they the leaf litter, leaf litter, like the the mm -hmm. um, die the the leaves that have fallen off of a plant and, and are decaying. Right. Yes, and so that's a very important thing to consider having an area where you rake your leaves, and mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be the whole yard. This is not, mm -hmm. you know, a, a radical. The whole yard's going to the weeds. That's right. It's just an mm -hmm. area. Right. And then there are like one of the flowers that we've re. Okay. located mm -hmm. is the host butterfly so everything circles back yeah. around to butterflies for yeah. us <laughs> of course <laughs> yes because some of these things we consider weeds are the reasons some of you don't see a lot of butterflies mm -hmm. and i've had people say i don't see a lot of butterflies in my area well mm -hmm. pick up google mm -hmm. do a little bit of researching and see what your area holds for host plants so that you can keep an eye out on those particular weeds mm. and allow them space just to grow. It, it's part of our coexisting with nature as we should mm -hmm. because it is the support for these human bodies mm -hmm. that we have. So our little appeal of the day to ask you, would you please consider a little corner of mm -hmm. your yard that you dedicate to these different practices? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come we wish us. all of you a wonderful week, and until next time, bye. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.